All right, so today I want to feature yet again another book by Gary Bannister. And I want to talk a little bit about what I agree and don't agree with in this book. And uh, just in general about um, the thought pattern in here that is espoused by a lot of people. So the name of the book by Gary Bannister is if you like exercise, chances are you're doing it wrong. Now, the premise, there's a picture here of Arthur Jones, inventor of Nautilus, and then later MedX, somebody who is credited with really changing how exercise is done and thought about, although most people in the exercise circles today may not even have heard about him, which is interesting. There's a lot of things in the mainstream that exercise that um, really still go back to uh, do what the champions do. Uh, he's a champion bodybuilder, that's what he do, whatever the fitness model of the day does. It's really incredibly arbitrary. And part of the reason I think for that is that, well, there's many reasons. One of them is selection bias, because first off, that a lot of people who are in really great shape will tell you they got in great shape because of whatever program they did. Well, truth is, uh, I, muscles and bodies are extremely adaptable and so many different things will work at least in the short term especially if you're genetically gifted and or drug aided but you know this one here suggests that proper training for maximum results the back of the book um, the powers to be have all but destroyed the value of muscle isolation discredited the use of machines in general Ignored everything related to the work of Arthur Jones and replaced it with a 10 cent solution. So here's the thing though, and there's a lot of also I want to talk about the fact there's research that's done on exercise. And I mean, most exercise research is six weeks long, 12 weeks long, if that. And as a result of that, all it's really telling us is what works for six weeks or 12 weeks. And the fact is, First of all, if you're dealing with untrained individuals, um, pretty much anything will work for six weeks or 12 weeks. If you're going from being um, sedentary, doing next to nothing, and then you do almost anything that's overload, you're going to see improvements. Also, if you're genetically gifted, in a lot of what is done in research done at universities with the, you know, the college football players, the college basketball players, the college track team, and by definition, if they're good enough to play at that level, then they are genetically gifted. But either way, um, if you're going to exercise, if you're going to benefit for exercise, it has to be a lifetime thing. Who cares if you get in great shape so that you can fit into a dress for your daughter's wedding or if you get in great shape so that you look good on the beach or or what have you, uh, or to compete for an event that you, in a sport that you participate in at a certain point in time. That's great. At the end of the day, if three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, you're in terrible shape, then, then what was the point? Anyways, so ultimately, I'm going to say to you that the best exercise is the one that you can sustain for a lifetime. And I've repeated this, this may be over uh, things I've talked about in previous things, uh, previous uh, entries that I've made. But the two main reasons why people don't stick with exercise program is the time commitment is unrealistic for most people. And secondly, the injury rate is incredibly high with the vast majority of mainstream exercise recommendations. So either people give up because uh, they simply can't put in the time and or they give up because they injure themselves. And unfortunately, some people don't give up despite injuring themselves and just get more and more and more injured as they go along, which is also tragic because even though they may be strong and may have uh, physiques that look good, they're heading for an old age that's going to be riddled with arthritis and functional ability challenges because of bad knees, bad low backs, and, and things like that. Just ask the vast majority of retired professional athletes 
And you'll see that most of them, you know, sometimes we bemoan how much these folks get paid for what they do, but most of them after their career ends are going to be living the rest of their life with various injuries as a result of what they do. So if you can find an exercise program that doesn't hurt you in the process, that doesn't take a lot of time, that you actually stick to for a lifetime, then that's the one that's going to give you the best results. If results is defined as staying in shape for <coughs> your entire life and not just for some temporary thing that you want to uh, be able to do uh, to impress somebody or to fit into a dress for a wedding or to look good on a beach or, or what have you. So when you think about exercise, um, you know, you think about it as like brushing your teeth. You're not thinking, geez, I, I, I've got to go to a wedding. I've got to do everything I can so my teeth will look good. And then after that, I'm going to go and let them rot. No, you're going to brush your teeth for the rest of your life because you hope to have your teeth working and not just looking good, but having them uh, for the rest of your life. Same thing with exercise. And if it takes two, three, four hours a week, unless that's your thing, unless you don't have any other hobbies, unless you don't do volunteer work, you're simply not going to do it. And even if it is rather low impact, things like that, and you, uh, but just the sheer volume of it will eventually have wear and tear because all activity has wear and tear. Now, if you can prove me wrong, if you're doing something that's different, that's higher volume, that takes hours, and you're not getting hurt, and you're fitting it in, you're happy with what you've got, great, uh, uh, more power to you and, and whatever you're doing, keep on doing it. If on the other hand, some of what I talked about today rings a bell with you and you're thinking, I just can't sustain this time or I'm not doing it at all right now because when I used to do it, I couldn't sustain the time or you're tired of getting injuries and always working on different things, then check it out, sustainablesuccess.ca and many other uh, evidence-based people. If you look at some of the podcasts I've done, things like that, lots of great people out there using common sense methods. Thanks for listening. If you choose to subscribe, I greatly appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.